All right, in this lesson, we are going to tackle some problems involving trig inverses. So we've done trig before. Here we're going to use this idea of an inverse function to tackle some more complicated problems. First, though, we're going to start with a familiar problem. We're asked to find f of 5 over 3. So we're plugging into this function. And this is our breathing function. So we've studied this before. This is how fast you breathe in and out. It makes sense to model that using a trig function since it is a cyclical phenomenon, right? So here we're just plugging in. So this would be equal to whatever we get when we plug in 5 over 3 for t. So 3 fifths sine of 2 pi over 5 times 5 over 3. Um, there's going to be a lot of algebra in this particular lesson, so it's good to find little tricks like this. 5 over 5 is 1, so we can cancel that out right away. So we get sine of 2 pi over 3, and then I'm like, okay, what is sine of 2 pi over 3? I'm like, okay, that's a 30 degree angle, right? Um, or you can look at the unit circle down here i've given you a couple in case we're a little rusty with that so sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 and i'm just going to leave this alone this is some decimal but i'm just going to leave it as kind of this ugly fraction and not simplify it so there's my solution and we're asked to interpret that value so the interpretation is that that's the breathing rate when t equals five thirds um so that would be three root over 10 liters per second. So that's the interpretation. The reason that's important is because here we're asked to kind of do the exact opposite. So the way that this would look would be like this. And then I'm trying to isolate T. So here's where idea of inverses come, come in, right? Um, to start, I'm going to start with the thing that's furthest away from T and divide by three fifths on both sides. So obviously on the right, that cancels. On the left, I'm just dividing fractions. So I get uh, 15 over 30, if I divide that out, equals sine of 2 pi over 5t. Okay, so here is an equation where we would reach for our calculator previously. Now we can solve this a little bit more precisely. So first of all, I'm just going to simplify. And if this is my equation and I'm trying to get to t, the next outermost operation is sine. I need to do the opposite, which we know is called sine inverse. So I do that to both sides. And on the right, my sine cancel out, right? So I'm going to be like sine inverse of 1 half equals 2 pi over 5 t. So now this is an equation where we could get a decimal from our calculator or we could use the unit circle to solve it. So I'm looking for anywhere where my y is a 1 half and I have pi over 3 and oh sorry my y is a 1 half so I have pi over 6 and I have 5 pi over 6. So I actually now have two equations right so I can split that up into pi over 6 equals 2 pi over 5t and pi over uh, 5 pi over 6 equals 2 pi over 5t. In both cases, I can cancel out and then cross multiply. So pi's can cancel on both sides. And I get 12t equals 5. And I get 12t equals 25. So t equals 5 over 12 seconds, and t equals 25 over 12 seconds. So the difference between the two, right, is whether we're solving for the inside or the outside of the trig function. And in part b, we need an inverse, okay? So obviously part b quite a bit harder, but the tricky part is the exact opposite of what you've done before, which is finding a value an angle on the unit circle and finding the value of a trig function. Here you're finding the value of the trig function. So we look for one half and found the angles that go with it. Now here, we have a similar example. This is straight off of delta math, by the way. So I'm gonna, first of all, just add one to both sides. So I get two cosine squared of x equals one. I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So I get cosine squared of x equals 1 half. This, by the way, means this. 
so you can rewrite it like that if you like. I think it makes it a little bit clearer. The reason we write it there is it's not always easy to tell whether my x is being squared or the cosine is being squared. So it's just kind of convention. But you can write it like this. It's perfectly allowed. You just have to know what this means. Now here, I'm going to do the square root of both sides, right? Because that's my next outermost thing that is preventing my x from being isolated. On the right, that cancels out. On the left, I'm just left with plus or minus one half, square root of one half, I should say. And notice this plus or minus is super important. Highlight it, um, underline it, whatever, because we don't just want whatever is going to make a positive square root of one half. We want a positive or a negative square root of one half because when you square a value, positive or negative values give the same results. And we've done this before. You see this in quadratic formula. You see it when you're solving equations with roots in it. Um, so it makes sense that we come across them in this case. So now we're about at the time where we'd use a cosine of inverse of both sides. But before I do that, I want to rewrite that right-hand side to make it look a little bit more friendly to me. And what I mean by that is the square root of a fraction is the same as the square root of the top and bottom, so I can write it like this, which is the same as root 2 over 2. right? So that's super useful to do that because that is a value off the unit circle. And here, what we're going to do now is we're going to make two different equations. We're going to be like cosine of x equals positive root 2 over 2, and we're going to make cosine of x equals negative root 2 over 2. And here's where we're going to do the inverse, right? So the cosine of inverse means I find all of my values where my x is positive or negative root 2 over 2. So this has two solutions here. This has x equals 3 pi over 4 and x equals 5 pi over 4. And then my other two solutions are over here. So we have x equals pi over 4 and x equals 7 pi over 4. So notice this time we got four solutions. It's because of that plus minus that we included when we square rooted both sides.